What's going on there guys? Today we're going to be animating this picture of Doug Hurley considering the recent launch of the SpaceX NASA collaboration. We're going to be using Photomotion Portrait for this one and of course our first step will be to split this image up into layers using Photoshop. So let's get to it. Once we have this image in Photoshop let's duplicate this locked background layer so that we have this layer one to work on here and while making sure that the quick selection tool is selected let's get to cracking on and making a rough selection. With this picture what we're going to to do is put Doug here and this phone into one layer and have the rest isolated to the background. So now with our rough selection complete let's go over to select a mask and begin finiting our edges. As usual take your time at this step and use whatever tool you think is necessary to get the best results. You can also use this overlay slider just over here if you need to and that will fade out our background if necessary. Again with this process the better our mask is the better our animation will be. Right so with our selection finally made let's go to our output just over here and select this new layer with mask. What we want to do now is just make sure that our mask is selected and disable this top layer just over here. We'll then make sure that this layer one is enabled and selected and then we'll go to select just up here and modify and then expand and we'll set the amount here just around about 15 pixels. And once we're done right click over here and select fill allowing content aware fill to do the majority of the work for us. Okay so what we have here isn't too bad but we can see even here with our top layer if we disable and enable it there is a lot more room for improvement on the clean plate so let's go over here to the patch tool and get started with repairing these areas which could look a little bit better throughout this process see about enabling and disabling this first layer as it will help as a reference to see what you think should be behind Doug here we can also use the clone stamp tool and a variety of different techniques to get the exact result that we want and just add in some smoothness to some of these areas so what we also want to do is fix the light within this image and what we want to do is is use the lasso tool. Let's go over to this area and select this light and right click on our selection. We'll then flip it horizontally so it fits to the end of this light and then we'll bring it just over here. We can also rub out this area here and the result here is actually pretty good. Feel free to do this for any other example you may have. However, we will also have to merge these layers together. So click on both layer one and two, right click and select merge layers just over here. We'll also need to start renaming these as not to get confused when we start to import our layers. Again, just make sure not to remove this background layer and keep it within this project. We will need it in just a second. Lastly, don't forget to save your project, placing it somewhere where there's not actually too much file traffic, as we don't want it going anywhere when we're animating our image. Awesome. So now with the Photoshop part of this tutorial over, let's jump into After Effects and start producing our animation. So at this point, all we need to do is just click on Start Portrait. And when we get to the main dashboard, click on this Add Photo button just over here. And once we're in this composition, we'll also also need to import our Photoshop layers. Just make sure that our import kind is set to composition. We don't really want to merge these layers back together. We'll also select this background layer, bring it into our working area, and then parent it to our layer just over here whilst holding shift. We'll then scale it using the parented layer just over here so it fits within our composition nice and snug. Okay, so with that all now sorted, let's get to fixing up our face mesh. So back at the main dashboard, click on this set face one button, and now we can see that we have our face mesh to fit. So let's grab one of the corners and scale it and then change the direction that this mesh is facing using the controller just over here. We can also rotate the overall mesh direction if we need to as well. Now of course don't worry about the shoulders at this point we will be removing those features from the mesh in a bit but what we really need to focus on is that the facial features are roughly fitting with the mesh. Okay so once we're happy let's go to effect controls and enable tweak so we can fine tune this face mesh even further. After that double click on the tweak button just over here and once we're in let's just make sure to select this layer to bring up the settings in effect controls. So if we look at our face mesh, we can see that we definitely need to tuck in some of these features and align Douglas's smile a little bit more. So let's go to effect controls and then over to the liquify effect just over here and adjust some of our warp tool options like the brush size and then we can get started. Once finished, as said before, we'll need to remove the rest of Doug's body from the mesh. So back to our previous composition, set up face one layer, we'll also need to click on the bottom panel just over here which controls the layout of the shoulders. We'll then go to effect controls and bring this body fade slider up which will remove the parts of the mesh which we need gone in order to continue. Okay so back in the main dashboard before we start animating let's think about adding in our separate layers. So 
So let's just double click on this add mask over here and then import mask as well when we reach the next composition. What we'll also need to do is go back into our project tab and drag and drop our Photoshop layer one into this composition. We'll then parent it to this layer while holding shift and that will copy all of the attributes from the background layer into this layer. So back at the main dashboard, let's do exactly the same with our clean plate by double clicking on this add background and bringing our clean plate layer from the project window tab and into After Effects. Again, we will need to parent it to this top layer over here while holding shift in order to have those attributes copied across. So back at the main dashboard, you'll notice that there is substantially more depth between Doug here and the background. Let's think about making a simple animation by moving this controller here to the right then moving our playhead slightly ahead and then to the left. Let's mark out the end of our animation and preview. Well, we can see here that we do have quite a lot of work to do in terms of our depth map due to the fact that we're seeing movement where we shouldn't and vice versa. You can also spot some distortions on say, for example, like the helmet just over here where it just doesn't look that great. So of course the next step will be painting in some of these features. We can do that by going over to this edit depth button just over here. And once we're there, making sure that our playhead is at the very beginning and having this layer selected. We will come back to these settings in just a moment but first let's go to our brush tool and then double click on the viewport which will bring us into this window. We'll then go back to effect controls and bring up this paint image layer opacity slider so that we can see exactly where we need to paint over. Next we're going to go over to the paint panel, swap our swatches so we're painting in white and just make sure that our flow is at 10% and then we'll go over to brushes over here and change our settings accordingly. What we want is a very soft white brush so we can paint in all of these features. So we'll add some depth to the helmet obviously this hand and part Part of the arm, this shoulder here as well, and finally the phone cable. Cool, so let's see what our depth map actually looks like. Very nice. Let's just add a little bit more depth around the surrounding areas and then back to the main dashboard. Right, okay, so this is cool. Let's preview our results. Okay, so it's much better than it was, but we are running into this funky issue here between the phone and the face where there's some weird stretching going on here. So let's go back to edit depth, select our brush, double click on our depth map, and in order to see what we've previously done, click on this drop down just next the view here and then select paint and then we'll just get into painting this area here. Right so now that our problem's fixed let's see about experimenting around with our animation to get the best results. If we click on this icon on the controller we can control the zoom here through effects controls but we can also adjust these settings from down here from the composition layers and we can animate some zoom into the animation. So let's exaggerate this movement to the left and then think about adding some rotation here and then changing the direction of the rotation by using the direction slider with within effects controls. So this is okay. And now we have this slight rotation as well as the zoom into our animation. If we preview the animation now, it looks okay. But again, the more we exaggerate these movements because we're dealing with a depth map, the more it will distort our animation slightly. So we can definitely notice a few problems with the way our depth map is acting, which isn't so good. Let's take out some of the zoom and jump back into our depth map layer and fix this hand here. Okay, so to fix some of these problems, what we can do here is just add in some white on these points that just look a little bit distorted in our main animation. All right, so if we're happy with the way our animation is acting, let's look at adding in some particles into the scene by going over to the settings button on the main dashboard and then clicking on this activate particles in effect controls. We'll also change the number of this particle type to 16 as petals aren't really going to fit this scene well. Okay, so these are quite nice. Let's change them so they're not popping out of our scene as much. Yeah, this will do quite nicely. So right now our animation is sitting at 30 frames and if we want to control click on this frame count, we can change it to seconds and see that our animation actually lasts for one second. Obviously one second might be a little bit too short. So let's move our playhead to the five seconds point, mark out, and then we'll drag these keyframes over here to the five second point. So if we preview our animation now, we can see that it's coming along really quite nicely. So what we can also do is maybe add some more zoom here, bring more of an emphasis on Doug's face. Excellent. So what we'll do is tweak some of the animation settings by clicking on the animation button and then add some rotation to this image and then we'll boost some of the movement by a very small amount. We can also change the background depth giving us more of a distance between Doug and the background. We can do this by clicking on the background button just over here and then boosting the BG depth settings. We may also give the background more scale in order to get rid of some of these black edges around our animation and separate Doug further. As usual toy around and see what works best for your project. Sometimes subtlety can go a long way with certain animations. 
Okay, so with all of that done, we're still left with a problem here where we can see some of these black edges here. And of course, we don't want to leave that in for our final animation. So let's go back to the add background where our clean plate now sits. So what we're going to do here is apply a repeat tile effect from the effects tab. What that will do is repeat our image around the edges. What we will do here is expand our values from the left and right in order to get rid of some of these edges. And what we will then do is change this tiling options to unfold. And now our background mirrors out and hides these edges a little bit better. Okay, cool. So before we even think about exporting out, let's also make sure that our export resolution is set to 4K. And we can do that by clicking on the resolution button on the main dashboard, then going over to effect controls and then changing this 1080p to 4K. Awesome. All what's left to do now is just export our animation. So as our playhead is already sat at the five seconds point, 150 frames. In fact, the motion perfect cut system is telling us that we're on the exact right frame in order to mark out for zero loops. If you're not getting a green light, just make sure that you're set to seeing frames instead of seconds and then type in the frame count for the amount of loops that you want. So once our time head is set to the right frame count that we want for our desired loops, let's hit N on our keyboard to mark out and look at exporting by going over to composition and then add to render queue. We'll also want to change some of the export settings. So let's jump down here and click on looseless. What we'll do here is just change this AVI to QuickTime so we're rendering out a .mov file. Once we're happy, of course, let's click on OK and then nothing really left to do but just hit render. And that's about it for this tutorial. As usual, hopefully you've learned something useful today and any questions, feel free to drop a message via the live chat. Take it easy and of course, until next time.